Welcome everybody to this JMC webinar on utilizing points and percentages to calculate a course grade. This uh, part of our six ways of grading series um, for JMC teachers and office professionals alike. Welcome. Uh, my name is Jake Banskoy. I am a longtime educator in the state of Iowa, taught for 10 plus years uh, high school English, and then I became an instructional coach. Um, did that for about six years or so, working with a few different districts in the state of Iowa, and joined JMC to become a trainer a couple of years ago. So I'm enjoying my, my role as a trainer and helping teachers and front office staff members uh, streamline processes and make their lives easier. Points and percentages have been utilized by educators for many years, making it the traditional gradebook option in JMC. For schools that aren't ready for a complete CBG system, the traditional grading system of points, percentages, and letter grades is still a great option. Today, as part of the six ways of grading series, we will explore the traditional points and percentages calculation method. Here's what's on the agenda. So we're gonna go through setting up the traditional gradebook scoring student work, reviewing results, and preparing report cards. So um, those of you that have been tuning into this series, you've known we've gone through several different options for standard-based reporting. Um, even if your school is not uh, necessarily using standards uh, uh, reporting tools like the competency-based grading module or standard-based report cards, um, if, you're, if you're still using the traditional points and percentages, We've got ways that you can keep track of standards through our traditional grade book. So um, I'll, I'll highlight a few of those options. Otherwise, if you are, have been using points and percentages to calculate course grades, um, this is uh, hopefully going to be a refresher for you and also point out maybe a few uh, helpful tips uh, along the way. So we'll go through setting up the traditional grade book first. Um, we'll start by setting this up by entering uh, grade cutoffs. So in JMC Teacher, grade cutoffs are utilized to determine letter grades for a course, which are based on the scores earned by students on assignments. You can either determine the lowest percentage for each grade on your scale or utilize default cutoffs set in JMC Office to establish grade cutoffs for each of your courses. Once you've established grade cutoffs for one course, simply copy them to all applicable courses to save time establishing grade cutoffs. With grade cutoffs defined, JMC will automatically calculate course grades as you enter student scores, providing updated results for students without the need for manual calculations. Log into JMC Teacher and head to Scores, Grade Cutoffs to begin entering grade cutoffs. Step one, Click the name of a course from the courses list to select a course. Helpful tip. Click the add default cutoffs link to add predefined grade cutoffs that have been set in JMC office and then skip the remaining steps. That's kind of the nice thing about uh, those default grade cutoffs. If everybody in your school uses the same uh, percentages uh, for your grades, for your course grades, if they're established in JMC office, you can just click one link and add all of those uh, default grade cutoffs. If your office does not have uniformed percentages for your course grades, you can define them uh, individually for, for each teacher. You would go to, uh, sorry, this is on that uh, grade cutoffs page. You'd click the add grade cutoff link to enter a new cutoff row and then define that row. So step three, you'd select a letter or symbol from the grades drop down list and then enter the minimum percentage needed to earn that uh, grade in the cutoff field. For example, if your lowest A is 93%, select A from the grade dropdown list and enter 93 in the cutoff field. Step four is an optional step. Um, we have a, a logic rule calculation method. Um, for those of you that might be using standards-based uh, grading principles or practices within a standards uh, the standard traditional grade book, um, you can use that logic rule to define the minimum number of times a student must achieve the selected grade in order to um, achieve that grade. So, uh, you know, if, if a kid needs to have a minimum 
of three A's in a category, you know, if you set up your categories as standards, you would enter the number three in that logic rule field and the, the grade would calculate using the logic rule. Otherwise it would be an average of the uh, percentages uh, leading up to that point. The logic rule calculation method will apply the selected grade to the student's overall grade once the minimum number entered in that logic number, logic rule number is reached. Step five, <clears throat> click the save link to record the new cutoff or the cancel link to discard your changes. So you're going to end up with several different rows here, one row for each grade that you've established. So step six is continue adding grade cutoffs until all letter grades and percentages have been entered for the class with the lowest grade cutoff, typically a failing grade set to zero. Step seven, click the copy button to apply your newly created grade cutoffs to any of the other courses on your course list. So you really only have to set up the grade cutoffs one time if you use the same percentages for each of your grades uh, for all of your classes. Then you just click that copy button. You can select individually the courses that you would like to, um, uh, to, to copy those cutoffs to, or you could select all courses. Uh, you know, place a, a check mark in that select all checkbox, and that's going to select all of your courses. Otherwise, you can select the individual courses by clicking on those courses, or if you'd like to select multiple courses, you'd hold down the control key on a Windows computer or the command key on a Mac computer while you click those individual courses. So step nine, click the OK button to copy the grade cutoffs to the selected courses or click the close button to cancel. So let's take a live look at entering grade cutoffs in JMC Teacher. So I'm in JMC Teacher. I'm gonna head to the scores module, which is the home to our traditional grade book, our points and percentages grade book. I'm gonna head to grade cutoffs, select a course in here, and you can see I've already uh, created grade cutoffs, but here's that default cutoffs, add default cutoffs link. You simply click on that link and all of these grades along with their percentages will automatically populate. So a nice time saver if uh, your school has defined uh, grade cutoffs for everybody, uh, you can use that. There's the copy button feature. Uh, over here, this uh, use point value grade scale, this is for competency-based grading purposes. So if you are using traditional points and percentages, there's no need to do anything with this over here. Um, you've got the logic rule feature too, which is a, a standard-based grading practice. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, if you use the, the um, points and percentages grade book or the, the traditional grade book to calculate your standards results, um, that might be something that could interest you. So there aren't any questions about grade cutoffs. That's really all there is to it. Click that copy button and, and copy them to your other courses. And if not, we will move right along here with creating categories. So in JMC Teachers grade book, the scores section offers customizable categories that allow for grouping assignments together. These categories can be named based on assignment type, unit, standard, or any other relevant grouping criteria that aligned with your teacher's needs. Additionally, weights and calculation options can be assigned to the categories to configure the gradebook according to the teacher's grading philosophy. By defining categories, teachers can effectively organize their gradebooks and streamline the grading process within JMC Teacher. In JMC Teacher, head to scores, categories and assignments to begin customizing your categories. Step one, select a course from the courses drop-down list to begin entering categories. And step two, click on the add category link to enter new category information or click the name of a category to edit an existing category. Step three, enter the name of the category in the category name field to organize your assignments. Helpful tip, use category names such as assessments, tests, quizzes, homework, group work, you can organize by unit names or standards. If you name your category after a standard, um, any, any method that's going to help you best organize your gradebook and, and match your, your teaching philosophy. 
Step four, select a color from the category color, color picker, to display the category in a specific color on the assignment scores page. A really nice feature for organizing your grade book on the, uh, on the next page that, that you'll see. So you can organize everything that's within this category, whether it be a test or homework assignment, or if uh, you have organized your categories by standards, you can color code each of your standards so you can see which results go with which standard. Step five, uh, an optional step, enter a number in the weight field to define the weight of a category in relation to the other categories when calculating a student's course grade. Helpful tip, set category weights that add up to 100 to convert category ratios to a percentage. Um, the only thing I'll say with weights here is each category is weighted in relation to the other categories. So it's not necessary that your category weights go up to 100. Um, it's probably the easiest to keep track of because, you know, if you think of an entirety of a pie, it's pretty easy to tell what 20% of that is. Um, if it does not add up to 100, however, your weights will work as ratios to the other categories. So if you want one category to weigh twice as much as the next category, you could choose two for that category and one for the, the other categories. Or if you want all of your categories to, to weigh the same, you could choose one as a weight for all of your categories. And then every category is going to weigh the same. Step four, select a color from the category color picker to display the categories in a specific color on the assignment scores page. I think must have had that in there twice, or I might have backed up. Uh, yeah, actually, I think I backed up. I'm sorry. Uh, helpful tip. Set category weights that add up to 100. Oh, wow, I've been through this slide already. I'm sorry. I think I clicked the, the down button once too many times or too few times. Uh, step six, select a choice from the assignment weights drop-down list to choose how the individual assignments within the category will be weighted. Uh, your options there are equal, which means all assignments, regardless of point value, will carry the same weight toward the category average. Uh, if you choose by points from the assignment weights drop down list, the total points for the assignment would contribute to the weight for that assignment. For example, a 100 point assignment would be weighted 10 times as much as a 10 point assignment. And then the user defined category allows you to specify a weight for each individual assignment. Uh, so if, if you wanted to use the two to one, you know, within a, a category, you can do that within um, the user defined uh, option under the assignment weights. Step seven, select a radio button from the special calculation options box to utilize the appropriate calculation options. So there are several different uh, special calculation options you can use. Um, you can use the number of low scores to drop. So if you are a teacher who philosophically believes in dropping the lowest X amount of scores from a student's category, you can uh, choose that radio button and then enter the number of scores to drop in that field there. You can calculate an average using the most recent number of scores, um, which you know a lot of uh, standard-based grading practices uh, they might not place an emphasis on um, all of your uh, assignments, but they might be utilizing uh, the most recent evidence. So you could calculate an average from the most recent one, two, three, four scores from a category. And then the decaying average is also a, a standard based grading practice. You can assign a percentage of weight to the most recent score and distribute the remaining weight to the other scores. So that would be a percentage that you would fill in there. So 80% of your overall course grade for that category would come from the most recent assessment. And then the, the remaining 20% would be divvied up among the other assessments in that category. Step eight, another optional step, a couple optional steps here. We've got a couple special category options. You can place a check mark and either the extra credit category or the standalone category check boxes. Uh, the extra credit category defines the, the category as extra credit, meaning um, the, the point value will not be held against a student. Anything that you've added to this category would add in addition to uh, the student's grade. And then the standalone category, um, 
would indicate that this category contains no assignments, but instead acts like its own assignment. So um, for, for some folks, they like to use that um, end of term assessment as its own category. Uh, you can create that standalone category, uh, semester test, and then uh, choose the, the value for that semester test. Step 10, an optional step, enter, the, uh, enter a number in the sort order field to display the category in a specific order, one being on the top of the list. So you can organize uh, the, the list of categories as well. And then step 11, click the save button to save the category or click the cancel button to exit. So let's take a live look at creating categories in JMC Teacher. I'm gonna orient us by heading back home. I'm gonna go to scores, categories, and assignments. I'm going to choose my course here from my courses drop down list. You'll notice I have a couple categories already created. Um, I do wanna talk a little bit about Google Classroom and I'm gonna come back to this. Um, to add a category, you simply click the add category link. Uh, I'm going to choose homework one of my categories and this is going to weigh 20 percent you know notice i have tests already created tests are 50 percent of my overall course grade another 20 percent would be homework now if i don't add this up and i'm going to go total points uh, if i don't if these do not necessarily add up to 100 so my 20 and 70 that's just going to be a ratio uh, tests are going to weigh a little bit more than twice as much as homework. Uh, I'm going to add a couple more uh, categories by the time all said and done, maybe a group work category, maybe a quizzes category. Um, but I want to get back to this uh, Google Classroom. We know that many of our schools use uh, an integration with a third party um, platform like a Google Classroom as your um, LMS, if you will. If you are uh, wanting to use this integration with JMC. One of the, the nice features is you can do all of your scoring in Google Classroom and then pull those scores into JMC so that you can um, run your report cards and things like that through JMC. Um, just to explain a couple things about this, the first thing that you'd want to do is go to File, Connect JMC to Google Classroom um, and, and make sure that your your, your class is connected to the Google Classroom via that class code right in there. And then once you do so, um, when you pull assignments from Google Classroom into JMC, they're gonna go into a special Google Classroom category. The one thing that we ask you to do is come to this category and move your assignments. Like if I clicked on assignment one here, I would move that then to my homework category um, because I want to use the calculation option that I've selected for homework. So now my point values will, will um, be correct. If I, if I don't use that, the Google Classroom by default does not carry a weight to it. So if you leave those assignment scores, even if they have a point value attached to them, uh, those assignment scores will remain um, not a part of your course grade because they, they have this weight automatically defined as zero. So. Recommend creating your categories in JMC just like you normally would, and then just pulling those uh, assignments into the proper category. This allows you to, to give tests in Google Classroom. It allows you to give homework. Um, it, it just allows you a little bit more um, flexibility with your, your category weights and assignments and point values and things like that. So any questions on creating categories in JMC? assign a color for my homework. I think I, yep, I've assigned a color for my test as well. I'm gonna create another category. We're gonna call this uh, group work. We're gonna weigh this at 20% as well by points. And I'm gonna give this color of yellow. All right. There aren't any questions, we'll get into creating assignments. Once you've established categories in JMC Teacher, you're all set up to incorporate assignments in your gradebook. Assignments encompass various coursework, including daily work, quizzes, tests, projects, um, anything that's graded, anything that you are going to record to determine the student's grade percentage 
would be considered an assignment in JMC. Simply select a category to house the assignment, uh, assign a maximum score, set a due date, and you're good to go. This straightforward process allows you to efficiently track and calculate student grades within JMC's gradebook feature. Head to scores, categories, and assignments, and click on the name of the click the name of the link of an assignment to begin. So you click that add assignment to add an assignment. Step two, you'd enter the name of the assignment in the assignment name field to display an assignment a name on the scores page. And then add the max score in that max score field to establish the number of points possible for the assignment. Uh, step four, enter a due date in the date field. Simply click that calendar icon. Step five, an optional step, you can sort order your assignments within a category as well. So if you want it to appear first on the list, you'd enter a one in there. Or if you wanted to appear last, you'd just count up the number of assignments and add it to you know, the, the third one on the list. Step six, you click the save button to add your assignment to the category you have selected. There are a couple extra pieces on this screen here. Uh, the assignment description, you can certainly add an assignment description. This will not be displayed anywhere except for on this page in the gradebook. Um, there's no need to add a benchmark uh, unless you're using a standards-based report card and you are using uh, points and percentages to calculate to that standard-based result. So um, all you have to do is click the save button and let's take a little live look at defining assignments in JMC Teacher. So I'm gonna go home here just to orient you, I'm going back to scores, categories, and assignments. I'm going to choose a category. So I'm going to choose my group work category that I uh, created. I'm going to click the add assignment link. And then this will be my create a game assignment. It's a group project. It's going to be worth 25 points. And it is due on May 26th. So I click save and that's all there is to it. And you can see my list um, that, that I'm creating. I have my Google Classroom um, assignments that are gonna be listed on there as well. And then I have my other categories, homework, group work, group work, tests, quizzes, whatever my categories would be. And then within those categories, the assignments that are attached to those categories. Um, so if you're looking at my grade book, the way that it's set up, 50% of the overall, um, student score is going to come from test results 20 percent is going to come from group work and another 20 percent is going to come from homework um, I, I don't have a full 100 i only have 90 so i'm going to add a category and we're going to call it participation and it is weighted at 10 and now you can see that my categories add up to 100 so these are all um, percentages now it's kind of an easy way to think of the the categories so there aren't any questions, I'm going to head right into scoring student work. JMC Teacher goes beyond basic gradebook features, offering streamlined score entry by showing one assignment at a time. Uh, the ability to mark assignments as late, uh, automatic calculation of grade percentages based on scores entered, uh, improved communications with families through notes added to individual scores, and the option to publish comprehensive student progress reports for easy viewing in JMC Family, all with the convenience of checking on a student's progress with a single click. After you've defined assignments in JMC Teacher, head to Scores, Assignment Scores to start recording scores and calculating student grades. Step one, select the course from the courses drop-down list to begin editing scores for this, a specific class. Fun fact, student names and assignment scores are conveniently presented in a grid view with student names on the left listed vertically and uh, assignments along the top, allowing you to view a significant amount of information at one time. A few helpful tips, you can customize the look of your gradebook. There are a few uh, customization options. This is under the file preferences page. Um, you can customize the assignment display order. Um, so you can sort by date, oldest to newest, date newest to oldest. There are a few different options there. 
Uh, and then you can also click a student's name link to access an overview of the progress for the, the specific course. That's also the view that your families would get in the JMC family portal and uh, the same thing that your students would get in the JMC student portal. To access important demographic and health information about a student, simply click the icon next to a student's name, enabling you to view and stay informed about essential details. So there are a lot of really cool features within this gradebook that allows you to see uh, a lot of information and also allows you to um, display some information or to send some information along to your families in those uh, family portals, student portals. So step two. Click a score field on a student's row in an assignment column to select a student score to edit. Uh, there's the numeric value with uh, up to two decimal places that you can enter, or you can enter one of the following special score codes to score an assignment. So we've got a few different features here. An X uh, is an exemption for the student and it exempts the student from the assignment. So it gives you uh, the field in there, so it, it doesn't show up as blank, and it lets your families and students know that, hey, you didn't have to do this one for whatever reason. Um, we have a P for a pending, which means the assignment has been turned in, and it is pending teacher feedback, just to let your families know that, hey, Junior did turn this one in. Uh, we have a couple different late um, options, the late included LI score includes the late assignment as a zero in the student's class percentage. And the LX, which is a late exemption, does not include. But it, it both of them note that the score is late. Uh, missing included, or an MI, you just simply enter that MI in that field there, includes the missing assignment as a zero in the student's class percentage. An M is the missing exempt. And uh, this will not count that assignment as a missing assignment. And an HI is a handed in exempt, uh, means the score will not count in the assignment percentage, but notes that the student did hand in the assignment. If the numeric value exceeds the maximum points possible, a pop-up will inform you that you entered a score greater than the maximum score. You can simply click the OK button and adjust the score to fit within the maximum points, or you can choose to keep that score as is and consider it extra credit. Um, so JMC will automatically figure up the extra credit for you unless you choose not to um, use that, that option. Step four, click the Publish button to make scores and current grade percentages for the entire class viewable in JMC Student and JMC Family. This is a, a key function, especially at the end of the term. If you want your families to be able to check on student progress, you click that Publish button. A lot of schools um, have, a, have a, some sort of policy in place, like we want our teachers to um, publish scores once a week so our families can follow along. So nobody gets blindsided at the end of the term. Uh, helpful tip, click any of the quick links on the right side of the page to use the following options when scoring assignments. So there's several different options for scoring assignments. Um, if you choose to you just show one student at a time, um, this toggles that view to show all or show one student. You can also show one assignment at a time. Um, that's depending on how you would want to use uh, this gradebook. The edit score note feature is great for giving individual students feedback on one assignment. You can apply that to one student or you can apply one comment to all students. Uh, the fill score column is a, a very uh, handy time saving tool there. If um, most of your students have uh, received 10 out of 10 on a, an assignment or one out of one out of an assignment, you can click that fill score column. You'd enter the one in here make sure this box is highlighted and then click the fill score column and it'll populate all student scores as one. And then you can go back and change, you know, the one or two students that might not have received um, that, that same score on there. So um, we've got a, a feature on there for importing student scores from a prior section. So if a student moves from your third hour to your fifth hour, uh, you can import those student scores from that third hour class into your fifth hour class. Um, so you don't have to dual entry all of those, those grades. And then the student sort 
feature allows you to customize the view uh, of, of students. So by, by default, they're on there alphabetically, but if you choose to maybe organize uh, your grade book by seating chart, or if you have some other special way, uh, you can customize that sort order as well. So let's take a live look at scoring student work in the scores grade book. So I'm just gonna pop into, I'm gonna go back to home and orient you once again, we're gonna go to scores, assignment scores. And you can see some of the work that I've already put in. I've got my color coded categories here, um, my assignment scores, my, my test scores, and then um, my group work in yellow. Simply click on a field here and then enter the number of scores. I've got um, my several different codes that I can use, pending, uh, late included, late exempt, missing. Um, if I ever want to know what those are, I can go to the file preferences page. This is file preferences, and all of these are listed right here under score colors. So if I if you're trying to remember, oh, what what was that code for an exemption? You know, you come into the file preferences, and ah, it's an X. So I can go in my scores and enter X. I can also sort by by date or category. So if I wanted my categories to uh, this, this is going to show my categories by alphabetical. And I can choose to show one student or all students in here as well. So go to assignment scores. Some of the uh, quick links features over here, I really like the score note. So I can add a score note in here. for the selected student. So let's see here, 20, let's see here, 24. And maybe I wanna just note which students she worked with. So in her student note, worked with Tommy and Junior on this project. The student, um, as I mentioned before, if you click on the, the student name link, I can see the um, what, what's displayed for families, uh, which would include that note. So any student note that I include is going to be included on the progress report in JMC student and JMC family. It's just an extra way to keep up with what's going on in the classroom for your kids. Um, I can also print this out. And this little eye icon, and it might be something a little bit different. We've got a few different icons that we display on this page. Um, for example, students that have a medical emergency plan. I'll see if I can try to find one that has one listed. Of course, I'm not gonna have one listed. Um, but you might see a little pencil icon right here that would indicate that the student has um, some special education information that's been entered in JMC office. Um, so it's a great way to share IEPs. Um, things like that, uh, accommodations for students potentially. Um, there's also a red uh, plus, which would indicate that the student has a medical emergency plan. You can click on any of those icons to see more information um, about the student. So uh, I can view the student's schedule, contact information, parents' contact information, any comments that are made in JMC office regarding the student, health history records, um, special education records, all those sorts of things can be housed in your grade book for easy access. So if there are any questions about that or about JMC grade book options, let's review results and prepare report cards. So as the term draws to a close, the office will notify you when it's time to submit course grades. And JMC teacher, you can easily edit the final course grades for your students, add any necessary comments for the report card, and then send the final course grades to the office. This process brings the current term to a close. Once you've completed the term's tasks, you can shift your focus on preparing for the upcoming term while the office professionals handle the distribution of report cards to students and families. To edit final course grades as needed, add comments and send grades to the office, head to edit course grades in JMC Teacher. Step one, select a course from the courses drop-down list to view all students along with their course grades for the selected course. Fun fact, JMC will automatically calculate 
current course grades from the scores module and or from the competency-based grading module for teachers using the JMC gradebook options, eliminating the need for manual calculations. It's one very nice feature of using JMC's gradebooks at the end of the term. All of this work is done for you. You just simply uh, add your comments and then send these grades to the office. Step two, you can override any grade. Um, you know, say you have a, a student that's sitting on the fence, B plus, A minus, you can add that, uh, you can edit that grade. A uh, blue check mark will appear, uh, letting everybody know that this final grade has been manually edited. Simply remove that check mark to revert back to the calculated uh, grade for that student. Helpful tip do you want to give? Uh, all students in the same course, the same course grade, you can use that fill grade column. Um, if everybody received a passing grade, you know, you can do your P's and then um, maybe change uh, one or two P's to an F if needed for uh, pass fail courses. Step three, select a comment using the comment drop down list to display a comment on the individual student's report card. So these comments are predefined, they're preloaded in JMC office. You'd simply select a comment um, if applicable from that comment drop down list. If you're not seeing a comment that you're looking for, you can add comments or request that your office uh, professional head to JMC Office Grading Utilities and edit comments as needed. So then you'll have those available to you. Step four, you'll click the save button to update any changes to course grades or comments, and then repeat steps one through five for each of your courses to put the finishing touches on all course grades. Step six, you'll click the print button to print the student's grades in the displayed class. If you want a hard copy of your, your final grades, and then send those grades to the office for all courses. Just click that link and all of your grades go to the office. So you can sit back while the office distributes your report cards as your school sees fit. After you've submitted grades for the term, we recommend that you head to file preferences and select the upcoming term from the current term dropdown list to prepare for the next term in the school year. So this is something that in JMC, uh, you can always do, you know, you, you might always have an, a, a thought for the upcoming term in mind. You can always go to the upcoming term or go to a previous term to um, review things that you have done or need to do in the future um, and, and edit those options within your grade book. Or if you want to see class lists for your, your second semester or whatever, you can always go into file preferences and change the, that term. Um, but we just recommend that you you change that upcoming term right after you send grades to the office. So um, if you are doing any work with categories and assignments, those changes will uh, apply to the new term. There aren't any questions with reviewing report cards. I guess I could take you on a quick live look at that. You can see the calculated results that I have for some students. I'm gonna go to edit course grades. Let's edit course grades. Hmm. Sorry, I think I took you to the wrong path. Um, there we go. Edit course grades. It was on edit course weights. So I'm gonna choose my course. Okay, so my, I think I'm on some one. I think I grabbed the wrong course here. There we go, some two. So yeah, you can see the, the results that I had for quarter four are populating. Um, I don't necessarily have an exam or you might have an exam um, that you can choose if, you're, if your school has that, um, that grading scheme selected that to include exams um, at the end of the term. Um, I just, if I, if I had a, a course grade that I wanted to override and select it from the list, this little check mark appears, I can choose comments. And then I can send grades to the office with the click of a link. So super easy. This page does not auto save. So I need to use the save button here. And if there aren't any questions on sending grades at the end of the term, let's take a look at upcoming webinars. So we have the top five summer to do's for those of you that are preparing maybe for online registration. Um, top five summer to do's. We finish up our six ways of grading series with uh, Moving forward with JMC's grading solutions, that's in a week. 
um, how to manage your message settings in JMC family. This is also next week. As we move through June advanced JMC teacher summer series, uh, message center and family app news, and then adding a new office user and understanding application security settings. So as you prepare for next year, this one's going to be an important one for you as we uh, dive into the permissions that certain members of your front office staff might need. Are you interested in learning more about how assessing student progress can reflect the unique needs and philosophy of your school district? Check out our YouTube channel for our six ways of grading series. It is almost wrapping up now. Um, great way to learn about all of the options for standard-based grading and assessment and also uh, traditional course letter grades. So what's the best way to train new JMC users? Let the JMC training team do the heavy lifting for you. It's also a great opportunity for those who aren't new to JMC but would like a refresher. From June until October, we're covering all JMC foundational skills and demonstrating time-saving tips and tricks. So this uh, webinar series begins at the end of June, June 28th. So if you're hiring uh, new staff, new teachers, new front office staff, we highly, highly recommend you to get them signed up for these uh, new user series um, webinars. And we just take a, a small chunk of time, half hour, 45 minutes, and get folks up to speed with all things JMC. Also, we've got our summer conferences coming up on August 1st in Minnesota. We'll be at the Twin Stadium and August 4th at the FFA Enrichment Center in Ankeny, Iowa. So uh, for our Minnesota and Iowa folks, we'd love to have you at our uh, summer conferences for the schools that send the most teachers or staff members to our summer conference. We'll hook you up with a pizza party if you win that contest. Um, be a great way to uh, engage with the, the rest of your staff on uh, some, some JMC learning. And it, it's always a great event. We've got tons of great food, a lot of prizes, a lot of, a lot of fun stuff. So love to have you there. As always, we invite you to be social with us. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn at online JMC, or check out our blog at jmcinc.com slash news. For this installment, of the six ways of grading. I'm Jake Banskoy, thanking you for joining us with JMC and we'll catch you on the flip side.